And remember this, if you use 368, you will have to have two thirds present and voting. So you don't use 368 because you don't get present two thirds present and voting. So you go through this procedure. So the question whether 368 could have been used or not is a separate issue. And had that been used, we'd have had another argument here, but it's not an issue here. Because you're subject to the constraints of the constitution. So you want to amend, you can use 368, but then you have to follow the procedure under 368. But so, for example, if you were to say that you amend the definition and say the, uh, the provision for consent of the states is not required. Approval of the states is not required. Can you do that? The answer is no. That's a proviso to 368. So you, if you want to work within the constitution, you have to follow then what the constitution obliges you to do constitutionally. It has to work within the constraints of the constitution. That's what we're concerned with. We're not concerned with any other interpretation of the constitution. Exactly. There's only one part in the Dr. Ambedkar's statement is very prescient. Right. Dr. Ambedkar postulates that a future constituent assembly may be a future parliament itself. Yes. Says the future parliament, if it met as a constituent assembly, yes. its members would be acting as partisans, seeking yes. to carry out amendments to the constitution yes. to facilitate the passing of party measures which they failed to get through parliament by reason of some article of the constitution, which has acted an obstacle in their way. This is the precise argument. The constituent assembly and the future parliament. So this is the precise argument I'm making is what Dr. Ambedkar said. That it is the, it is the parties, partisan political measures that are carried through in the process in the form of legislation or otherwise. Which can't be done as far as, uh, we, we, we should be constrained by the provisions of the constitution, but the constituents assembly doesn't have any such fetters. Well, it's 20th of June, 2018. Section 92. That we saw, Mr. Sibyl. Yeah. That we saw, you read out section 92. That's right. No, but what's important is the date. On the 19th of June, a political party in coalition with another party, which was in government, withdrew support. That is not in a list of dates? Yes. You just kindly note that. It's in the proclamation. 19th of June, 2018. Yes, Mullahs, BJP withdrew support from PDF. The governor on the next day issues a proclamation, which is also quite curious. That we find at top of page 48. That your Lordship may look at, Mullahs, uh, PDF page 85, volume 3, the proclamation itself. Anything turns on it? I mean, in the sense to read it. I mean, you've paraphrased it, I guess. Yes, I have paraphrased it. Is there any... No, no, no. The provision no, permitted the governor by proclamation to assume to himself all the powers and functions of the government of the state. Such a proclamation in one terms of 92.5 required concurrence of the president and under 92.3 would cease to operate within six months, which I've already mentioned to your Lordship. We need not go into This is it. the power corresponding to 356, which is vested in the governor. That's right. That's right. But here it's vested in the, the governor, governor Malas, independent of the council of the council. Which I mentioned to your Lordship. It's a very, very unique power. And the Council of Ministers was suspended in the process. Well, he didn't even wait for a day. I mean, it's normally speaking, what would happen? Malaz? A governor would wait for other political affiliations to take place to form a government. That's also part of political process. I'm sorry? That's also part of political process. That's precisely what I'm saying. Malaz. But why do you think I've been saying this? Why would a governor do this on the next day? Malaz? Yes, then what happened? Well, then, then, well, so he does this. So 16, six months were to expire. Then, well, there is some controversy. And I just tell your Lordship orally that controversy is. According to the PDP, and I think somebody else will argue that. I'm not arguing. According to the PDP, they send a fax to Srinagar that they have the support of the national conference and they are willing to form the government. The governor says he never received the fax because he says that he was in Jammu and the fax was sent to Srinagar. So, so Malaz, on the 21st of November, that the, the next day, he dissolved the assembly. 
Yeah, on 21st November. The facts are some. Fax is also sent on have a sense of deja vu, no? Uh, fax is sent on 21st. He dissolved it on 21st. The fax hasn't reached him. Fax was sent. It's almost on the anvil of the period expiring. No, that expired on 3rd of January, uh, 19th of December. 19th. So about a month short of. Yes, that. yes, month short. This is because not another challenge anyway. No, no, I'm not. No, I not. myself said so. I myself said that there is that is an issue. Which so he dissolves the legislative assembly. He dissolves the legislative Anomalous. You can't dissolve without the Council of Ministers. 36, 38, and 92 are his only powers. He has already suspended the Council of Ministers. He dissolves it. Without the aid and advice. Nothing. Why do you think I've been saying continuously that this is a pure political act? The governor and the government were acting in tandem. They wanted to get rid of 370. Toss it out. Why would any governor do that? Why would the governor on 20th of June, after withdrawal of support on 19th of June, suspend the assembly? Don't allow any political affiliation and parties to take place so that they can a new government can be formed. Which is the power of dissolution under the constitution just for the process? Yes, 53. Section 53 of the Constitution of Jammu and Kashmir gives that power of dissolution, not part of the exception given to the governor in, in the, with reference to his powers that he can exercise without the aid of the Council of Ministers. The process, according to me, when you are interpreting constitutional provisions, is as important as the substance. Because it's a constitutional process. That's what another Coelho says, but this time it's Paulo Coelho That's in the right. alchemist. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> then, well, on the 19th of December, the proclamation of governor's rule expired. A proclamation under 356 promulgating president's rule in the state of Jammu and Kashmir was issued on 19th December. So then came president's rule. So on 3rd of January, I want to show the proclamation. Well, it's better to see the proclamation, volume 3, PDF 92. Volume 3 of documents, PDF 92. You want us to look at this, Mr. Simon? PDF? So you want to. Want yes, to I don't. Let's see document. that, Mother. It's important. Well, that's a very important provision. 